What if the future of space isn't about rockets going up, but people staying up? While companies are fighting to build the first private space stations, SpaceX might already hold the winning card, and they haven't even announced it yet. Because the truth is, Elon Musk's Starship could solve what other space companies call impossible. And the craziest part, SpaceX, may already be shaping that market right now, without anyone realizing it. In today's Tech Map episode, we're diving into how Starship might quietly become the world's first next-generation space station, and how SpaceX is already training the world to use it. So why should SpaceX jump into the business of commercial space stations? Let's break it down. Right now, NASA spends over $3 billion a year just to keep the International Space Station running. But here's the thing, private companies could do the same job for a fraction of that, somewhere between one to two billion annually. That would free up nearly $1.8 billion for NASA to rent lab space from private operators instead. In other words, astronauts stay in orbit science keeps happening, and a whole new commercial space economy gets the boost it needs. And that economy? It's on track to explode, possibly hitting $1.8 trillion by 2035. Why? Because space is no longer just for astronauts. It's becoming the next big business frontier. Think space tourism, orbital research, biomanufacturing, and even movie production in zero gravity. Space tourism alone is growing by more than 25% a year and could pull in over $3 billion annually by the early 2030s. Now several companies are already racing to take the lead. You've got Voyager Space with its Starlab project Axiom Space Vast, and of course, Blue Origin. What's driving all this momentum? A few key breakthroughs, reusable rockets that slash launch costs massive low Earth orbit satellite networks, and billions in private investment from major players like Janus Henderson. Together, these forces are creating a self-sustaining space economy where humans won't just visit orbit, they'll live and work there. But let's be real, it's not all smooth sailing. For starters, these stations are ridiculously expensive. We're talking between $1 and $4 billion each, basically the price of 10 ultra-luxury mansions floating in orbit. Finding investors willing to bet that kind of money is tough, especially when markets are shaky or people worry the concept might fail. Then there's the tech and safety side. Everything needs to be perfect air-water radiation shielding because in space one small mistake could be fatal. History has shown us that rocket failures can happen, and when lives are on the line, almost safe isn't good enough. On top of that, there are rule books and deadlines to deal with. NASA and other governments want these stations operational by 2030, but new safety laws take time to write. Add in global supply chain delays or rocket setbacks, and timelines start to slip fast, especially with China's Tiangong station already up there, setting the pace. And finally, one of the biggest reasons people doubt the feasibility of private space stations isn't the technology or the cost. It's SpaceX. Because when you really think about it, how can other companies feel confident building billion-dollar stations when their biggest competitor with its secret weapon Starship is quietly solving most of those same challenges? Financially, Starship changes everything. The basic design is already done. SpaceX has been developing all the core systems similar to those for a Starship-based space station since 2021, when NASA awarded them a $2.9 billion contract for the HLS Lunar Lander version of Starship. To turn that design into a low-Earth orbit station, SpaceX would only need another $1 to $2 billion pocket change compared to the cost of the ISS. And here's where it gets wild. Elon Musk estimates a single Starship launch could cost under $10 million. Even conservative estimates place it at no more than $20 million. Compare that to the ISS, which has cost more than $150 billion to build and maintain over the years. 
That massive cost gap means SpaceX could, in theory, launch 20 starships, link them together in orbit, and create a giant rotating loop that generates artificial gravity. Remember, Starship is a fully reusable, two-stage, super-heavy launch vehicle, and that reusability is a total game-changer. It slashes both maintenance risks and costs, turning future space stations from fragile fixed structures into dynamic, upgradable platforms. If a component fails, no problem. A Starship module could literally return to Earth, get repaired on the ground, and be relaunched something impossible for the ISS. And the materials SpaceX uses stainless steel, which is cheaper, stronger, and more heat-resistant than the aluminum alloys used on the ISS. It's smarter engineering that makes long-term space construction far more affordable. With stainless steel reusability and a dramatically lower price point Starship-based stations, suddenly don't feel like a dream they feel inevitable. In fact, they could be the first real step toward making space a permanent home for humanity. Starship wasn't even built for low Earth orbit originally. It was designed for deep space missions, long duration trips to the moon Mars and beyond. That means it's already engineered for months long stays in space, which makes it more than qualified to serve as a permanent orbital station. Just look at the size. The main living section located in the upper payload bay is about 18 meters tall and 9 meters wide, giving roughly 1,000 cubic meters of pressurized space. That's actually larger than the entire ISS, which offers around 935 cubic meters. But it gets even better. If SpaceX removes or repurposes Starship's massive internal fuel tanks, a fully converted habitat could have up to 3,000 cubic meters of volume, three times the size of the ISS. Future crewed versions like Starship 4 are expected to offer more than 1,000 cubic meters on their own. Supplies and consumables could be delivered by other Starships or the same spacecraft that currently resupply the ISS. And since this kind of Starship station wouldn't need a heat shield, or orbital refueling, the whole system becomes simpler and cheaper to operate. Eventually, when its mission life ends, probably sometime in the 2040s, the Starship space station would be deorbited, just like the ISS, and safely splashed down into the remote waters of the South Pacific at Point Nemo. One of the most underrated advantages of SpaceX's Starship is its material. Unlike the ISS, which is built mostly from aluminum Starship, is made of stainless steel, and that choice changes everything. As said, stainless steel gives Starship far greater durability and easier maintenance. It's tougher against micrometeorite impacts, better at withstanding radiation, and far more resistant to the extreme temperature swings of space. It also doesn't corrode like aluminum does, making it easier to repair and more reliable over the long term. In short, it's safer, simpler, and cheaper to maintain no need for the constant patchwork repairs that have kept the ISS operational for decades. If Starship can keep astronauts alive, comfortable, and productive during an eight-month journey to Mars, then maintaining life in low Earth orbit will not be a problem. And with its massive interior space, Starship offers incredible flexibility. Picture this. Six full decks stacked vertically, like a space apartment building complete with storage areas, a gym, a greenhouse for growing food, communal spaces, and private crew quarters. But if it's operating as a stationary station in microgravity, SpaceX could rearrange it into a horizontal layout, like a submarine, stretching three long decks from nose to tail. That enormous internal volume opens the door to more than just living quarters. Starship could host full-scale laboratories, engineering workshops, greenhouses, and even why not a zero-gravity basketball court. But here's what makes it truly revolutionary. Starship isn't just one spacecraft. It's part of a whole interconnected network that SpaceX already operates. The super-heavy rocket serves as the reusable launch platform, 
The Dragon capsule can deliver supplies and rotate crew members, and Starlink satellites ensure constant communication and high-speed data links. Together they form an integrated self-sustaining orbital ecosystem all under one company. Right now SpaceX is already testing the third generation of Starship. The plan is to launch Starship version 3 to orbit in 2026 with a key mission goal demonstrating in-space propellant transfer. That means it's not a question of if SpaceX can send a Starship-based space station into low Earth orbit before 2030, it's when. This gives them a massive head start compared to every other company trying to build modular stations from scratch. And speaking of launches, Starship offers a throwback to the old days of space exploration. Instead of assembling multiple modules in orbit, like VAST or Axiom Plan to do SpaceX, could launch a fully built station in one go, just like NASA did with Skylab more than 50 years ago. There's also a fascinating idea floating around inside SpaceX, the dedicated Starship Station variant. It's a purpose-built version designed specifically for life in orbit from day one. Instead of launching a deep space Starship and modifying it in orbit, this dedicated variant would be constructed on Earth with everything already installed, life support systems, laboratories, crew quarters, and all. The idea is to make it a true orbital condo, ready to operate immediately after launch. This specialized station could also include Dragon-style thrusters for station keeping, helping it maintain altitude and orientation in low Earth orbit, without relying on external tugs or adjustments. No matter which route SpaceX chooses, converting an existing Starship or building a dedicated station variant, the result is the same, a massive, durable, and completely reusable structure that can be upgraded, repaired, or replaced as technology evolves. Now, to be clear, SpaceX hasn't officially announced plans to build a giant Starship-based space station in low Earth orbit. But that doesn't mean they're sitting on the sidelines. In fact, they've already entered the commercial space station race, just in a different role as the key supporter behind the scenes. Take Axiom Space, for example. They rely heavily on SpaceX. Axiom buys or leases launch services and crewed capsules from SpaceX, specifically the Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon spacecraft. Then they package and resell those missions to paying customers around the world. 